This is Perfectly Poetic. The Reaper and the Flowers There is a reaper whose name is Death, and with his sickle keen, he reaps the bearded grain at a breath and the flowers that grow between. Shall I have naught that is fair, saith he, have naught but the bearded grain? Though the breath of these flowers is sweet to me, I will give them all back again. He gazed at the flowers with tearful eyes. He kissed their drooping leaves. It was for the Lord of Paradise he bound them in his sheaves. My Lord has need of these flowerets gay, the reaper said and smiled. Dear tokens of the earth are they where he was once a child. They shall all bloom in fields of light, transplanted by my care, and saints upon their garments white these sacred blossoms wear. And the mother gave in tears and pain the flowers she most did love. She knew she would find them all again in the fields of light above. Oh, not in cruelty, not in wrath, the reaper came that day. T'was an angel visited the green earth and took the flowers away. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, 1839 Flowers Spake full well in language quaint and olden, one who dwelleth by the castled Rhine, when he called the flowers so blue and golden, stars that in earth's firmament do shine. Stars they are, wherein we read our history as astrologers and seers of eld, yet not wrapped about with awful mystery like the burning stars which they beheld. Wondrous truths and manifold as wondrous God hath written in those stars above, but not less in the bright flowerets under us stands the revelation of his love. Bright and glorious is that revelation written all over this great world of ours, making evident our own creation in these stars of earth, these golden flowers. And the poet, faithful and far-seeing, sees alike in stars and flowers a part of the self-same universal being which is throbbing in his brain and heart. Gorgeous flowerets in the sunlight shining, blossoms flaunting in the eye of day, tremulous leaves with soft and silver lining, buds that open only to decay. Brilliant hopes all woven in gorgeous tissues, flaunting gaily in the golden light, Large desires with most uncertain issues, tender wishes blossoming at night. These in flowers and men are more than seeming, working as they are of the same self-powers, which the poet in no idle dreaming seeth in himself and in all flowers. Everywhere about us are they glowing, some like stars to tell us spring is born, others their blue eyes with tears o'erflowing, Stand like Ruth amid the golden corn. Not alone in spring's armorial bearing, And in summer's green emblazoned field, But in arms of brave old autumn's wearing In the center of his brazen shield. Not alone in meadows and green alleys, On the mountain top and by the brink, Of sequestered pools and woodland valleys, Where the slaves of nature stoop to drink. Not alone in her vast dome of glory, not on graves of bird and beast alone, but in old cathedrals high and hoary, on the tombs of heroes carved in stone. In the cottage of the rudest peasant, in ancestral homes whose crumbling towers, speaking of the past unto the present, tell us of the ancient games of flowers. In all places, then, and in all seasons, flowers expand their light and soul-like wings, teaching us by most persuasive reasons how akin they are to human beings. And with childlike, credulous affection, we behold their tender buds expand, emblems of our own great resurrection, emblems of the bright and better land. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, 1839 You've been listening to Perfectly Poetic. Perfectly Poetic